Okay, I think uh, only four have uh, only only two uh, participants have joined. I guess. Yeah. Today is a holiday. I don't know whether uh, it's a good Friday to the night. Yeah. 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 We'll wait for some time. If there are no no, no candidates are uh, logging in, I think then we'll have to cancel it. Okay. Okay. Someone is also asking me that uh, is it a class to them because it's good Friday. Good Friday. Somebody is also asking. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to announce last week. Otherwise, I would have cancelled today's class. Okay. No issues. Yeah. Okay, sir. No. Let us wait. Yeah. I think more and more people are joining. I think four people. I mean, three participants have joined. I mean, four now. I think now three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's three. I think more people may be joining. If they have got about ten, I think we'll start the class. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And not only that, in Kerala we have got the Vishu also. There is another another thing. Vishu is a holiday here. It is a festival season. Vishu. So, two. Okay. I don't know whether there is a in Tamil Nadu also there is something known as a New Year, uh, uh, beginning of the New Year. That also okay. that's with the Vishu in Kerala. Okay. We will wait for about five ten minutes and see whether there are more people joining the uh, class. If it is so, we will continue with the class. No issue. No Saroj, do you have a case? Are you ready with the case, Saroj? Yes, sir. I have got a case, sir. You have got a case, okay. Yes, Let us wait for five minutes uh, to see whether uh, now we have got about uh, uh, yes. number of people are on the increase. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Five, five students have joined, sir. Yeah.
Okay, then we'll start. I think there is uh, more 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 students are joining, so we'll start the. Um, Saroj, uh, you will be presenting the case. Uh, let us get somebody to discuss the case. Uh, Eknath, would you like to discuss the case? Hello, Eknath. Can you unmute yourself? Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. So, would you like to discuss the case? History okay, part, sir. I will discuss. Yes, history part. Then clinical and all. Uh, Saroj himself can discuss. So, uh, history part. Uh, if somebody else, is, somebody else who does not know about the case, discusses. Uh, that okay, sir. Okay, so we will start the case, and uh, uh, once the uh, history is presented. Uh, you must be ready with your discussion. You can take a, uh, a book and a paper to write down the relevant points of the story, so that when you discuss, you should you should, you should be able to do it without any difficulty. Okay. okay. So we'll ask uh, Saroj to present the case. Uh, so, uh, Iman, so you have to, you have to share the screen. Facility to share the screen should be given to uh, Saroj Sone. Okay. Iman, so are you there? Saroj, do we have the? Yes, yes sir. Uh, let me see, sir, whether I can share it or not. Yes, okay. sir. Can you see my? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you please uh, put it is in the slide some more? Yeah, it is uh, visible. You have to uh, make it into the uh, into the. Slide some more. Yeah, projection mode. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Just Yeah, perfect. Oh, that's great. Great. Okay, then you can start. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, Saraj. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, Good evening, everybody. Okay. Uh, sir, Mr. Bhaskaran, 74 year old male patient admitted at emergency department with complaint of shortness of breath for last one year and palpitation for few months. Okay, uh, Egnath, would you like to start some discussion? Shortness of breath for one year, palpitation for few months. What do you mean by palpitation for few months? Sir, Sir Uj? Yeah. How many months? Uh, sir, uh, three to four months, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, young man, would you like to 75 year old me? So, what are the possibilities that we should that should cross your mind? Uh, it may be some uh, uh, previous old coronary artery disease with the heart yes. failure that could be very good. A patient who had a previous myocardial infarction or some uh, coronary artery manifestation, and now he has come with the complications of the uh, previous episode. But she has not mentioned okay. anything about the previous episode. But then probably she may be telling it in the past list. Okay, anything else? Uh, second, sir, uh, uh, there may be some valvular uh, regurgitant lesion that could present late. Uh, like? Uh, mitral regurgitation or some like that. Okay, sometimes mitral prolapse patients. Mitral prolapse. Uh, yeah. Mitral prolapse patients can sometimes present quite late in life, uh, yes. especially yes. degenerative mitral prolapse. They may present at this age. That's very good, especially if there are palpitations also. They may uh, start thinking that there may be holding oral. Okay, very good. What else? And then, uh, what is the valvular lesion which can come as a degenerative valve valve uh, 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 lesion which can occur at uh, later age uh, beyond sixty five? Aortic sten aortic stenosis, sir. Aortic stenosis. Aortic Any person coming with symptoms uh, around sixty five? Yeah. We should always think of the possibility of aortic. Uh, of course, uh, the, the, the symptoms do not directly uh, refer to aortic stenosis because what are the important symptoms of aortic stenosis? Uh, shortness of breath, uh, uh, angina and syncope. Late symptom before that? Yes, sir. Uh, angina, syncope, and... Uh, they can have angina, syncope, and of course, breathlessness can also happen. What is the reason of exceptional breathlessness? Yeah. I have exercise, so the thing is cardiac output is fixed, sir. He is not able to increase the cardiac output. That mostly leads to single. But what is the re reason of exertional breathlessness in patients with aortic stenosis? 
Excessional bathrosis is a symptom due to what? Diastolic dysfunction. Yeah, it's a diastolic dysfunction. There is a uh, pulmonary congestion leading to breathlessness. Whenever there is a low cardiac output uh, or low cardiac output cannot increase, what are the symptoms? They can have uh, reduced blood supply to various organs. And that can have easy fatigue, easy yeah. fatigue ability, singer, vagina, all those things can happen. But if there is a diastolic uh, dysfunction resulting in elevation of the diastolic pressure, that can give rise to shortness of breath. So patients with aortic stenosis, when they develop a left ventricular hypertrophy, the LV compliance can come down, LV uh, filling pressures can go up, that can give rise to symptom of breathlessness. Okay. Any other condition? Would you like to think of ASD in this patient? Uh, ASD uh, could be, sir. Uh, we can. Uh, ASD, uh, that could be, sir. Uh, 60, 70, uh, you know, some patient uh, get. Uh, Worsen at 60 70 years of age. Yeah, but think, ASD will not present with shortness of breath. Uh, that's the only problem because the shortness of breath is not the uh, presentation of atrial septal defect. They usually present with uh, palpitation and also some, some of them may develop right heart failure, they may develop edema. So the symptom, the uh, shortness of breath is one, one thing which is odd for uh, ASD and also only one year. Usually ASD starts developing symptoms around the age of. Uh, 40, 45, 50, they continue to live and then develop uh, irregular palpitation, atrial fibrillation, they, become, they deteriorate. That is the way it progresses. And here, he has been symptomatic only for one year. Okay, so that will keep ASD very low in the list. Do you think that it can be some form of a cardiomyopathy? Cardiomyopathy can definitely be considered because uh, uh, some of the patients can uh, present with the uh, uh, VGS or dilated cardiomyopathy quite late in life. Or it, can, it, be, it may be something like a ischemic cardiomyopathy also, may not be myocardial infarction. Ischemic cardiomyopathy can, some of these patients can present. Uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, pathophysiology of ischemic cardiomyopathy? Anybody can answer. Uh, anybody would like to answer what may be the, uh, uh, the pathophysiology of ischemic cardiomyopathy? So this is because of the microvascular disease. Yes, yeah, it can microvascular disease, it can be uh, disease of the macrovasculature also, especially some of these patients can develop uh, uh, something like a, a hibernation and that can result in LV dysfunction and that can, they may present later as. Uh, cardiomyopathy or it can be microvasculopathy which can also present as a, uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy okay so these are the few things which are cross our mind and once we are heard most more into the story we will discuss further okay right. anybody else would like to bring up any any other case any other differential diagnosis just because we have had only two symptoms of the patient shortness of breath for one year and palpitation for four to the past four to five months Okay, then we will go, go ahead with the story. Okay, uh, yes, sir. Yes. yes. So, uh, history goes back in uh, 2006 when patient had his retirement in the year 2005. He used to work in the garden and sir, uh, uh, I could not type properly. So, sir, a uh, little bit I will add also. So, he used to work in the garden and he was... Uh, 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 hard working and used no, no, to... No, 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 Saroj, Saroj. Yeah, so, uh, uh, a comment about your story. Uh, what, what do you mean by story of the patient? History of present illness. History of present illness is actually. Sir, uh, sir, sir, it is related with this. That's why, sir, I started with this. So then you can uh, put put this also in the history of present illness. You can say okay, that uh, uh, in 2006, that is about uh, 16 years ago. Here, whatever may be the thing that you can include as a history of present illness, part of the history of present illness. Okay, uh, actually, okay. history of present illness is a detailed description of the presenting complaints. So, if you want to include that also in the uh, history of present illness, you can put this also as part of the complaint and then you can describe it. There is no problem. Okay, sir. okay. So that sir. should be part of the presenting complaints. Otherwise, you should include that in the history of past illness. Okay, right. Go ahead. History goes back to 2006. Patient had his retirement in year 2005. He used to work in the garden and used to go upstairs without uh, 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 go upstairs up to two flights without discomfort. Within one year of his retirement, 
he felt that he is unable to go to two chairs and he started getting breathless even with the one one chair and his breathlessness increased within one year and he started having shortness of breath during his day to day activities like dressing undressing and going to the toilet it means his shortness of breath was uh, increased from neha uh, two to neha three within one year at first his shortness of breath subsided with rest but later on uh, uh, he felt breathless even at rest and he also had pnb and uh, intermittently and there is no history of cough expectoration fever etc sir to suggest respiratory tract infection okay any any other any other okay associated associated with shortness of breath he also experienced exertional palpitation throbbing uh, sensation in the chest at first regular in nature and within a few months palpitation increased in frequency and started getting palpitation even at rest palpitation also increased with anxiety and there is no history of irregular palpitation not there any history of loss of consciousness or weakness of the limb or syncope associated with palpitation he also felt extreme fatigue with exertion at first going to the two stair but now uh, is it uh, but after within one year uh, uh, now on day to day activities his fatigue was not associated with any uh, intake of drug or any associated major systemic illness within one year of his symptom he became so symptomatic that he was advised to undergo open heart surgery Associ uh, uh, associated with bypass uh, uh, surgery with valve replacement both of the operation were done in the year 2007 he stayed in the hospital for 16 days and he was discharged with a medicine one of which was a blood thinner which he stopped after 3 months and the other two medicines he continued he was in reg on regular follow up with his surgeon and physician he was asymptomatic till last year and used to work like before his retirement in 2005 okay now we will stop at this level uh, agnath would you like to discuss uh, what all is the information available no yes sir actually uh, uh, in this patient uh, there is increased shortness of breath in one year history sir that is one plus point okay. second thing is that uh, that in uh, miss nihar 2 to nihar 3 then uh, history of pnd is there sir okay uh, second thing is uh, there is regular palpitations are there sir okay and then history of fatigue is there and other point is that uh, patient underwent uh, cabg with valve replacement okay so what must what must be the valve replacement which is which is undergone what may be the valve replacement which he has undergone a uh, mitral replacement sir okay why did you think it's mitral replacement uh one is a uh, uh the, the pnd is the patient has given so that is left sided heart failure one okay uh, pnd but the, that only means left sided heart failure but he was getting pnd for a long period then we could have started uh -huh. thinking whether he has got associated mitral stenosis uh -huh. but he never had any regular palpitation also so uh Uh, mitral disease uh, which which valve is more frequently affected in with uh, coronary disease so you see is it the aortic valve or the mitral valve what is the pathologic process of uh, calcific degenerative aortic valve disease how it is same like uh, uh, same like atherosclerosis yeah, yeah it starts as a valve sclerosis which Was can be considered as a equivalent to atherosclerosis of the artery yes then the this valves become more and more sclerosed so, and gradually the calcification process occurs and the valve opening is lost and the patient becomes severe aortic stenosis so indirectly the calcific uh, aortic stenosis might be having its origin from something like an atherosclerotic process where is the thought process so 
if that is the thing then we have to think that most likely he has undergone a cbg also so both put together he may he might have had aortic valve stenosis one replacement which has resulted in aortic valve replacement and he also simultaneously underwent a cbg procedure okay, okay. can it be see you brought in the possibility of mitral disease can there be mitral disease associated with coronary disease Uh, yes, sir. That is also yes, sir, a could, possibility. Yes, sir. Uh, patient has previous history of mitral valve uh, disease, and uh, how, do, how do you know? Where is the history of where is the past history of mitral valve disease? How do you know that? I am asking a question. What is the can the mitral valve be involved in in a ischemic heart disease or in coronary artery disease? And if it is a manifestation, what is the manifestation? Sir, it could be uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, acute uh, inferior valve MI. Uh, acute inferior valve MI. Uh, okay, patient may develop but uh, acute MI, acute uh, valve, uh, acute regurgitating lesion that can develop, sir. But it's actually uh, looking uh, chronic, sir. Okay. okay. How can they develop acute mitral regurgitation? Due to rupture of cordy tendon. Okay. Okay. Rupture of cordy tendon. Or even partial rupture. Papilloma. 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 Papilloma is rupture, and something is done. Most of the patients have come to you. They can develop acute breathlessness. But here, such history is not there because there is no history of an acute breathlessness. He had a steady progressive increase in his breathlessness. Okay, right. Then, then, what is other manifestation of uh, uh, mitral disease? Can they develop uh, uh, something like uh, 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 the papilloma muscle dysfunction and mitral regurgitation? Ischemia, if it, uh, it can also precipitate papilloma, something like papilloma muscle dysfunction and mitral regurgitation. And uh, uh, these patients can have a uh, mitral regurgitation can progressively increase, and that can sometimes result in a significant mitral regurgitation, and that may aggravate the symptoms. And when the patient undergoes a, a CABG, uh, uh, the surgeon usually replaces the mitral valve, or they may do a repair of the mitral. So we do not know whether it is a uh, Mitral valve or aortic valve, but uh, if, if you look at the uh, possibility of by statistics wise, I would go for the aortic valve first, and then subsequently I will think for think of the possibility of mitral valve also. Where the mitral valve regurgitation in a patient with coronary disease, especially when they are undergoing valve replacement, or when they are undergoing a CABG procedure, usually surgeons do something to the valve. Most of the times it is a valve repair. Uh, replacement is not the desired surgical treatment. It is a Repair of the valve, unless the surgeon found the repair is not possible. Okay, so we will uh, keep our mind open and we'll think that the more uh, either the aortic valve or the mitral valve has been replaced in that order. Aortic valve, mitral valve. Okay, right. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Any, any anybody else who would like to give a comment? Anybody who would like to uh, give the thought process on what can be other process? Yes. There is something in the chat, John. Okay. Uh, uh, continue with the story. Yes, sir. yes, sir. He was doing well till 2020. It means uh, one, 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 of the, one of the participants wanted to know, uh, so story to interrupt you. Did he uh, give any history of an uh, exertional chest pain? No, sir. No, sir. Before, before the, uh, uh, 2005, he did not have the uh, chest pain, no history okay. of chest pain. And even after the 2005, his main symptoms were exertional breathlessness, uh, difficulty yes, to climb stairs and all. At that time, did he give any history suggestive of angina? And he did not give history, but uh, sir, as a routine, uh, before doing the valve uh, like surgery, Oh, that's right. That's right. No, no, no. The, we did not know, know the details. Just wanted to know whether the patient had any history of foot injury. So the answer is no specific symptom of foot injury. His main yes. symptoms were breathlessness and, uh, and fatigue, failure to end, including paroxysmal of Okay, right. Yes. Fatigue was his uh, complaint, but uh, sir, he did not give history of chest pain or okay. exertional uh, uh, angina, sir. Okay, no, okay. right. Now, uh, sir, he was doing well till 2020. It means for 14 years after his valve surgery, 
now again he started experiencing a similar type of palpitation and shortness of breath so much so that within a span of one month he had to be admitted in the emergency department uh, and one back one week back with severe dyspnea and palpitation after admission he was given medication and he was put on niv and he was stabilized within 3 to 4 days and now he is in neha too he also felt a throbbing sensation in the chest regularly in nature with mild chest discomfort relieved after taking rest at first but later on his symptoms gradually worsened and persisted even at rest so he was admitted in emergency department okay uh, i know nobody like to give comments about the new development possibilities uh -huh. Uh, say related to his previous treatment, can he develop a complication which actually caused the uh, development of new symptoms? Can something happen to the? So man? Actually, it's uh, actually it's not acute. Actually, uh, within one month, uh, means that not uh, the sudden have uh, uh, shortness of breath uh, has developed. Uh, it's a span of one month. Uh, so what? What Gra happens, gradual. What can uh, happen to the, what can happen to the CABG procedure? Sir, so, uh, my patient may land up into a uh, gradual uh, in failure. That could be the reason. No, no, gradual failure due to what? You have to give an explanation. He has undergone two surgical procedures, CABG and uh, valve replacement. After which he became perfectly normal, leading a normal life. Now he has deteriorated. So, can you think that this may be because something has happened to the surgical procedure? A complication which has resulted in the new symptoms. What can happen to CABG? Can they develop uh, 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 some problem with the graft? Uh, uh, graft stenosis could be the chances. Uh, uh, graft failure, graft stenosis, especially uh, after period of 14 years. What is the usual pattern of graft graft failure? Venous graft failure and uh, uh, IMA graft failure. Sir, uh, venous graft failure uh, is that uh, it that occurs early. Sir, in ten years, uh, chance of the almost ninety ninety five percent graft get fifty percent, uh, sir, in ten years. Any anybody else who would like to give a comment? What is the graft patency rate, and what is the uh, the IMA graft patency rate? Venous venous grafts are in one year uh, up to seven to ten percent, hmm. and uh, in five year thirty uh, percent, and uh, in ten year fifty percent. Okay, almost right. Uh, usually, uh, this is a study which was done many years ago actually. So nowadays it may be slightly different because of the availability of statins and uh, dual antiplatelets and all. Probably the venous graft failure may be definitely less. But the original study is that in the first year. Fifteen percent of the grafts can be occluded. One five. Then so year two to five, every year two point five percent. So that obviously means that two point five into four ten. So at the end of five years, almost twenty five percent of the grafts may be occluded. Venous grafts. Then from five, year six to ten, every year there can be a five percent graft occlusion. That means five into five twenty five. So at the end, as Saru just rightly pointed out, at the end of 10 years, 50% of the venous grafts can be occluded. First year, almost 15%. Two to five years, 10%. And five, six to 10 years, another 25%. So altogether, around 50% of the grafts can be occluded at the end of 10 years. But what happens to IMA graft? So uh, IMA graft, so only 5% uh, at the end of uh, 10 years. Yeah, roughly around 90 to 95% of the <laughs> IMA grafts are widely patent even at the end of 10 years. What is the reason? So the reason is that, uh, sir, actually the arteries, uh, chance of atherosclerotic occlusion is uh, uh, atherosclerotic process very fast in case of the venous graft. Sir, the reason is that uh, the thin endothelial membrane is uh, very much leaky and uh, lipoprotein get deposited uh, early and it forms the plaque. Yeah. That lead to atherosclerosis in case of the venous graft. Yeah, uh, but but uh, uh, that was this the study was actually previous to the availability of statins. So with statins, probably the venous graft patency rate might have definitely gone gone up, 
and uh, in my own experience when we were doing angiograms about 40 30 40 years ago we used to find that most of the graphs have become actually irregular or there there are some disease process nowadays we find that the uh, graphs are widely patent and some of them behave like arteries they be, uh, appear like arteries also so definitely the value of 50 percent at the end of 10 years maybe a little more in the present scenario with the availability of a lot of drugs which can actually reduce or prevent atherosclerotic process okay right yes uh, how, why is that ima graph remaining patent Uh, sir, uh, sir uh, this atherosclerotic uh, process is slow in uh, case of uh, uh, intramembrane. What is the reason? Anybody would like to give a comment why the IMA graphs are really they are uh, they are widely patent even at the end of ten years, almost ninety to ninety-five percent. And uh, our base, the surgeon prefers to put the AMA graph to LED, and that is shown to improve the quality as well as quantity of life. So is it the same reason? Because the uh, see uh, the uh, venous graft they are more leaky uh, than the this arterial graft. Uh, oh, I am not uh, trying to compare with the venous graft at all. I am asking you a separate question. Why the uh, AMA graft? You see, uh, you you can put the radial graft also. The radial graph patency is not as high as IMA graph patency. It is much less. Saroj, would you like to give a comment? No, sir. I forgot. Okay. So studies have shown that uh, I, I, IMA, internal memory artery, has got the capacity to secrete nitric oxide. This endothelium has got the capacity to uh, generate and secrete a lot of nitric oxide. So when the IMA graft is given, one, the graft does not develop atherosclerosis. Two, to which to, to the artery to which it has been grafted also is supplied with plenty of nitric oxide and the health of the endothelium of those vessels also improve. So IMA graft has got the uh, capability to the, the lining membrane can release more of a lot of nitric oxide and thereby the artery does not develop atherosclerosis and also secondly, the artery to which it has been grafted, also uh, the atherosclerotic process is uh, actually retarded. So IMA graft is uh, uh, something very uh, very unique and now a lot of research is going going on. Why the IMA graft is giving rise to a lot of nitric oxide? If we know the secret of it, then uh, this can, be, it can become a wonderful uh, discovery. So IMA graft has got the tendency to, the, they do not develop uh, atherosclerotic process at all. And uh, uh, it is 90 to 95 percent of patients. It is still patent at the end of 10 years. Okay, right. So it can be the patient might have developed some uh, uh, some stenosis of the grafts that we are given. But still, the problem is that he is not having any significant angina symptom. His main symptom is shortness of breath and palpitation. So what is other possibility? Can something happen to the valve? Sir. If something happened to the valve. Actually, oh, sir, yes. patient gave history of fatigue also, sir. Yeah. Uh, in uh, uh, initial uh, initial uh, story. Okay. So it could be the uh, wall become gradually uh, stenotic. Uh, yes. What? Do I, how can the valve steadily become stenotic? What is it? What, what is it? Over a period of time, so the valve function can deteriorate because uh, there is a growth. Sir, uh, uh, sir actually, uh, patient uh, age, age is age is a seventy-four, sir. Oh, uh, age is seventy-four. So it could be a uh, 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 synthetic graft. Um, sorry, uh, uh, tissue graft. No, no, he, he underwent a valve replacement. Oh, sorry. Quite possible. You are right. You are right. So it got degenerated, uh, so that could be... Yeah, he's 74 now. He underwent a valve re replacement about 15 years ago. So he was 59 and 60. So there is a possibility that the surgeon might have replaced with a bioprosthetic. Tissue wall, bioprosthetic. Well, and over this period of time, bioprosthetic valve might have developed stenosis. Very good, excellent. If it is a mechanoprosthetic valve, what can be the possibility also? Stent thrombosis. Oh, sorry. Uh, wall thrombosis is gradual. 
ിസ് <laughs> so these are the things we which will uh, we'll keep in our mind whether it is a uh, yeah, of course cbg graft uh, stenosis from the story we don't have a clue that usually these patients will present uh, with a symptom of ischemia which this patient is not having at all so i think we'll go first for the uh, degenerative changes which has taken place on the van which has resulted in either a pan formation in a with a bio mechanoprosthetic van or a degeneration in a bioprosthetic way okay right we'll go ahead anybody else who would like to give any further comments any comment any other thought process okay right go ahead he also felt a throbbing sensation what is this throbbing sensation agna then no, i didn't get said this what is this he also felt a throbbing sensation <laughs> in the chest so this suggest uh, volume overload palpitation okay you think that it is a uh, throbbing was uh, because of the uh, 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 extreme awareness of the palpitation so that could be volume overload or it could be ectopic with also some the people <clears throat> when they get regular ectopic they may uh, describe the ectopics in different ways of course most of them describe as an irregular rhythm but some of them may describe that in between he gets a very powerful beat so uh, a, a, a ectopic uh, beat also would be one of our thought process about to explain the symptom okay right now go ahead history of past illness no history of joint pain no, 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 no. are you coming to the treatment part that what treatment he received and all subsequently or you are not uh, Sir, uh, sir, I told here that uh, he was discharged with medicine, one of which was blood thinner, which yeah, was yeah, okay. stopped after three months. No, no, no. Once he, uh, that was at the time when he underwent the surgery. Yes. But sir. now he has developed more symptoms, and yes. for his symptoms, was he given any special medication? Sir, uh, yes, sir. Uh, this time only, when he was admitted, he was put on uh, sir, stabilized within three to four days, and he was put on NIV also. and uh, uh, was he was he given a tablet which uh, which makes him pass urine yes sir, yes sir yes sir uh, anti failure treatment was given sir yes sir heart failure and then he was given anti failure treatment okay, yes right. yes sir yes sir okay right go ahead no history of joint pain with fever or sore throat in the childhood no history of rheumatic heart disease in childhood no history of recurrent chest infection in childhood Uh, no history of cough expectoration hemoptysis with seasonal variation he was diagnosed as a hypertensive and di- uh, diabetic during the evaluation for the surgery in 2005 sir so 6 sir this one no history of back pain or exposure uh, so uh, this one is uh, wrongly typed sir uh, what is this fibrodural disease no no sir that is when sir no Exposure to venereal disease. No, sir. This is wrong, sir. Wrong type, sir. Sir, there is no exposure to venereal disease. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he gives history of pulmonary cough in 2018. Okay. No history of symptoms of right-sided heart failure like edema, ascites, or swelling of body. No history of hematuria, nocturia, or oliguria. No history of intermittent claudication. No history of loss of consciousness or limb weakness or syncope. Okay. Uh, Agnal, would you, after hearing uh, a lot of negative points, uh, would you like to uh, come to a diagnosis from the story? Do you give any uh, one record? Uh, any, any? Uh, do, do you think that you we should give some importance to pulmonary cause? Ah, uh, pulmonary cause. Uh, uh, How can the heart be affected? Sir, the, sorry, yeah. pulmonary cause. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, If fibroid changes happen in a lungs uh, due to uh, 
uh, then only uh, right side failure mostly uh, we can uh, oh, very unusual uh, very un- well, cardiac uh-huh. cardiac involvement uh, tuberculosis tuberculosis how can it affect the heart one is uh, our one is pericardial uh, effusion uh, uh, constricted uh, arteries uh, pericardial involvement with pericardial effusion and hearing process can ultimately result in constricted pericardial effusion so very rarely it is said that granuloma of uh, Myocardium may be present, but it is very rare, sir. Yeah, myocardial, myocardial tuberculoma can happen, and sometimes it can interfere with the conduction, and the patient may present with conduction abnormality. Tuberculoma can happen, just like uh, uh, gamma. Sometimes tuberculoma can happen, and sometimes patients can present with conduction abnormality. It's very rare, but uh, the the commonest involvement is uh, the pericardium, which can get initially with pericardial pericarditis with pericardial effusion, that can heal. and there up in the fibrosis and the patient can present with constrictive pericarditis but here the symptoms are not suggestive of constrictive pericarditis and uh, we would like to ask you whether he took a complete treatment yes sir he took complete treatment also you know, i think that uh, that uh, that ends there it is only a, uh, a coincidental uh, uh, history i don't think we can refer that to our present cardiovascular problems okay right so uh, now come to the diagnosis agna so he he was diabetic and hypertensive and diagnosed uh, at the time of uh, uh, like evaluation for the uh, surgery to uh, uh, 2006 okay right now so now we have to give a professional diagnosis based on the story uh sir actually uh uh, 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 uh story uh, pressure underwent cbg and the aortic wall uh, sorry out, uh, wall out of out of, out of, out of uh, these two you have the importance to one do you think it's why the aortic wall replacement was more important or cbg was more important uh cbg is more important sir why no history of angina symptoms nothing so do you think that uh, you have to give uh, more relevance to the aortic wall replacement and uh, Uh, as a part of the aortic valve replacement when he underwent angiogram and all his uh, uh, the, uh, the coronary disease was detected and then then he underwent the cabg do you think that that may be more likely uh, uh no sir act no sorry uh, uh, yeah. valvular we can do more important to valvular region uh, uh yeah, i think uh, looking at the story part i think i would like to think more in terms of the valvular disease first and then uh, or subsequent to the investigations he was detected to have a coronary artery disease and for which he underwent a uh, bypass surgery at the time when he underwent the valve replacement okay that is uh, that is one point and he did very well and subsequently what happened he again developed the same symptom shortness of breath yeah yeah that's right due to what uh, and uh, shortness of breath uh, 15 years uh, You you have already mentioned that we have already short, sh- shortness of breath as per means the patient uh, uh, could be in failure sir actually ma'am also okay, uh, obviously the... he received treatment for heart failure now i am heart failure what can be your explanation for that is it uh, you have, we have already discussed that point most likely he might have developed a uh, problem in the valve itself maybe because he might have received a bioprosthetic valve that might have developed a degeneration so he has developed a, a, a stenosed valve again or he might have developed a pannus and in a in a mechanoprosthetic valve and subsequently has gone in for a stenotic uh, valve and that has given rise to symptoms the second possibility is that he might, he might have developed some uh, narrowing or occlusion of his graft uh, which was given to him when during the time of the uh, previous surgery and that also might have contributed to the symptom of heart failure so i think about the, both these possibilities uh, we will discuss but i would consider the valve problem as the first priority uh, because uh, the initial everywhere the symptom was only breathlessness he never had an angina symptom yes, that friend. makes me think that more likely i would go for a valve first and then the uh, the, the, uh, the coronary disease as an incidental finding and for which he has undergone a cabg procedure okay anybody and uh, other students who would like to give uh, uh, discuss this point you can also Uh, if there is any point you want to uh, highlight you can put it in the chat box also let me see chat box there are uh, 
or oh, chest pain in no stiff chest pain all right uh, pannus formation somebody has asked a uh, uh, comment about pannus formation so that we have discussed uh, low pressure in lima due to angulation not prone for at this process no shear stress actually um, uh, even you look at lima over a period of time actually lima grows it becomes bigger and bigger uh, in a patient who has undergone a lima graft to a led and the flow through the lima is actually becoming more and more especially uh, the uh, when the person exercises when led needs more and more blood the flow through the lima is not re reduced it becomes more and more in over a period of time usually the lima grows it becomes bigger it is a, becomes a bigger vessel in males the lima is not a huge vessel but it grows subsequent to the cav the, uh, the graft procedure and very often lima over a period of time might have grown and has become a much bigger vessel Okay, right now let us go to the physical findings. Uh, 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 Saroj, would you like to give any comments? So we have discussed the initial part, and we would like to have your comments also. Sir, uh, I have not given detailed uh, treatment history. That was my mistake. I should have written that. Sir. Yes, patient was uh, continuing with the uh, statin and uh, single antiplatelet for last fifteen years, and uh, uh, this time when he was admitted, he he was given uh, treatment for the. Um, failure, sir. Okay. He was given treatment for heart failure. Okay, right. Yes, go ahead. So I think he was uh, uh, starting to know that uh, his diabetic hypertension. So he, he must have been receiving treatment for diabetes hypertension, and these patients are prone to develop uh, uh, other sclerosis. And when a patient is diabetic hypertension and has CABG, what do you think, uh, Agna or, or uh, Saroj? What do you think would be the most ideal? Uh, uh, cholesterol value according to the present recommendation. So, uh, pardon, sir. Uh, in a patient who has got established coronary artery disease, who has undergone a CABG procedure, who is diabetic hypertensive, what will be the target uh, cholesterol value that you will look at? Either total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol. Uh, sir, LDL cholesterol. Yeah. It should be sir uh, in this case, sir. Uh, our target should be less than fifty-five. Okay, definitely less than seventy. Less than hundred. Yeah, and uh, anywhere near sixty would be most ideal because studies have shown that when the LDL cholesterol value is less than sixty, it can not only prevent a sclerotic process but to some extent it can reverse it. So, uh, a value of LDL definitely less than seventy, preferably below sixty would be most ideal. And so, uh, is very high risk uh, ASCVD. Yes, so I think uh, it's where. Uh, Uh, for what do, what is the evidence that uh, uh, the LDL cholesterol value of 50 or 60 is safe? Do we have any evidence? Why are you targeting 50 or 55 or 60? Do we have evidence that this uh, 50 or? No, 50? sir. It, low is better. Even sir, uh, uh, lower lower than this, sir, then it will um, give uh, problems. Some Because sir, the uh, cholesterol is also needed for myelin, nervous system, all these sir. sir below, below this, I think sir, it will not be good. No, uh, see, uh, what is the evidence that we can go below sixty? Do you have any evidence? That's what I'm asking. Anybody would like to give? Uh, there has been studies which have shown that. Uh, the, usually, the newborns have got an LDL cholesterol value of around 50 to 60. Two, the aborigines who live in jungles, where they eat mostly on uh, natural food like nuts, fruits, and sometimes animal meat. When they kill animals, they eat. And these people also have got a LDL value only around 50 to 60. And the the monkeys, which are the the the, uh, the which are very apes, which are very close to human beings. And their uh, cholesterol value (LDL) is also being found to be 50 to 60. So there is a thought process that around 50 would be most ideal, and it will not give rise to any problems. So what are the problems that LDL can uh, statins can give rise to, or a low low LDL value can uh, create? What are the problems which uh, the statin therapy can create? What are the complications and the side effects of stat long-term statin therapy? Myopathy. 
Myopathy, that is the one is myopathy, and uh, what is the incidence of myopathy? Two percent. Three to yeah. five percent. Myopathy? No, no, very low. Oh. It's much less. It's only about one in thousand. Very low. Next is morphic and is liver involvement. Yes, the enzyme elevation can be. Uh, Definitely much more frequent. Maybe about uh, 2 to 3 percent, 2 to 5 percent of patients who are on statins can have definitely uh, enzyme elevation. And next problem is they can develop diabetes. Yes. There is a slightly higher incidence of diabetes in patients who are on statins. There is a thought process that statin by itself may not pr produce diabetes, but it can uh, precipitate diabetes in a person who is prone to have prone to develop diabetes. For example, patients with perfectly normal blood sugar values, very unlikely that they may go in for diabetes following statins. But those who have got a borderline blood sugar value, maybe 100, 105 fasting blood sugar value, these are the patients who can uh, more likely to go for diabetes uh, when they are exposed to statins. So statin can actually uh, 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 may not uh, uh, precipitate diabetes, but a person who is prone to develop diabetes can develop di manifest diabetes. And of course, uh, studies are also shown that sometimes statins can give rise to some degree of uh, uh, cognitive uh, impairment of cognitive function. The process is that LDL also forms part of the uh, neurons. And whether uh, too much of an LDL reduction, whether it can give rise to some degree of uh, cognitive function impairment. But there is no proof to that because there are some studies which have shown that if you give statins, there is a lower incidence of Alzheimer's disease. So. Uh, to some extent, it can improve the cerebral function and thinking that this can impair the cognitive function is not yet fully established. Okay, so uh, statins, of course, yes, when the ideal value would be less than 70, maybe preferably less than 60. And even if you look at the total cholesterol value, which is dependent, which is uh, proportionate to the LDL reduction, maybe around 130, 120 to 130. That would be the most ideal level. Okay, right. Any other uh, uh, discussion point. Okay, now we'll go to physical findings. Yes. Sir, uh, family history not suggestive of uh, any sudden cardiac death or so, uh, father and mother non diabetic and had no coronary artery disease. He is non smoker and non alcoholic and has no habits. Sir. Okay. So physical okay. examination. Okay. Yes. Uh, well built. No dysmorphic features, conscious, cooperative, oriented to place, person, and type. His height is 165 centimeter, weight is 60 kg, arm span 162 centimeter. Sir, so, pallor sinusis, uh, jaundice, edema, uh, so, uh, they are absent sir, now. Sir, so, pulse. Sir. Pulse 70 beat per minute, regular, high volume, collapsing, equally felt in all four limbs. No radio radial or radio femoral delay. And condition of arterial wall is normal. So, uh, uh, what does that mean, Agnath? Uh, patient develop aortic regurgitation. Yes. So, uh, uh, possibility that he may have developed a uh, uh, aortic sewer aortic regurgitation. Yeah, we have also significant aortic regurgitation, maybe para paravalve leak, or it may be the damage to valve itself. Because so far we are not. Uh, we, we do not have any clue whether he has a bioprosthetic valve or a mechanoprosthetic valve. Okay, right. Okay, go ahead. The so pressure is 145 by 42 in right upper limb and 195 systolic in the right uh, lower limb, sir. Oh, yeah, so, right. Any comments about the, uh, the pressure, uh, uh, Saroj? Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, pulse pressure is very high. So okay. it is uh, around 100. Okay. And also, uh, what about the hill sign? Yes, sir. Hill sign, sir. It is uh, positive, sir. Yeah. yeah but the, 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 the pressure, the systolic pressure depends. Sir, more than 60 is severe. Uh, it's significant, sir. Yeah. It is 50. Yes. So, it definitely, it's definitely more than moderate. It could be near about severe. Yes, but obviously, uh, when we have the difference of more than 60, then we consider it as a severe aortic regurgitation. Okay, go ahead. So, JVP is raised 7 cm above the sternal angle. Both A and B waves are seen. Uh, normal X and Y descent. Mean JVP 4 cm of water. 
and there is normal respiratory variation. Okay, uh, any comments from anybody because uh, in a patient with severe aortic regurgitation, uh, JEP elevation is not a useful feature. So, what do you think? Is there any collapsing pulse here? Uh, whether we have to think of something different? So, when patient was admitted at that time, sir, uh, this was. Yeah, yeah no, there were comments. You know, see, uh, JEP is raised 7 centimeters above the sternal angle in a patient with aortic regurgitation. What are the possibilities? How can the right side be involved in a patient with uh, uh, significant aortic regurgitation? So one because of the reverse burning effect? Yeah, I think uh, a reverse burning effect. Why do you want to say reverse burning effect? It's a burning effect. Burning effect is the one in which uh, the interventricular, sept in interventricular septum hypertrophies or uh, bulges into the uh, right ventricle and encroaches onto the right ventricular cavity and interfere with its function. Yes, the reverse the burning effect is the other way around. Yes, the nucleus septum bulges onto the left. left side. So it is a burning effect itself. That's one possibility. Very often that gives rise to a prominent A wave, but uh, B wave is not uh, prominent. B wave is not usual because uh, B wave obviously means that what are the conditions in which you can get a prominent B wave surge? Prominent B wave. Uh, B wave. B wave. Yes, sir. Uh, Sir, uh, uh, tricuspid regurgitation. Very good. Sir, uh, uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension uh, causing the sir, uh, tricuspid regurgitation. And hmm. sir, uh, one is sir, um, RSOB2, uh, RSOB2, um, RA. Okay. And sir, uh, right ventricular failure. Right ventricular failure. Um, uh, unless there is a tricuspid regurgitation, may not give rise to there will be expression of the jugular vein expression of both A and V waves will be seen, but unusual prominence of the V wave. What are the conditions? Sir, in a prominent view, sir. Prominent view, prominent view, you are asking, sir. Yeah, prominent V wave. Sir, uh, in case of uh, PR, in a Gerbodis effect, sir. Gerbodis. Uh, ASD with MR, okay. uh, then a rupture of sinus of falsalva and a coronary and a coronary camera fissure. Okay. Uh, whenever there is a large volume of blood coming to the right atrium, like in TR or in a patient with ASD with MR or in a patient with uh, uh, body uh, shunned where the blood is flowing from uh, left ventricle to the right atrium and also an arterial flow into the right atrium as it can occur in rupture of sinus of falsalva or a coronary camera fistula. Uh, to the coronary sinus draining into the right ear. Okay, so those are the conditions in which you can get a very prominent uh, V wave. Okay, right, yes. Okay, go ahead. So uh, here A and V waves are prominent, so it is not unusual, not prominent, but they are just seen. So uh, not unusually prominent, it may all be related to. Uh, the heart failure. Okay, right. Go ahead. The carotid pulsation are visible on both the sides with carotid shadow. Okay. The peripheral signs of aortic run of C, like collapsing pulse, pistol sharp sound, and durosius murmur. Yes, okay. Out of these uh, peripheral signs, which one is the most uh, significant? Okay. You described uh, collapsing pulse, pistol sharp sound, durosius murmur. All those things put together, which one do you think will be the most? Eurogeous number. Explanation, why do you say why do you say that? Yes, why do you say that? Reason. If you are Eurosis Murmur is most important, you have to give an explanation. In neurosis, people have described two, two, two components, one systolic component and diastolic component. Out of these two, which is more diastolic important? Diastolic is more important. Sir. Yes, what does that mean? So it means sir, uh, the, uh, mm. so What does that mean? 
It obviously means there is a reversal of flow even in the mm -hmm. during diastole. During diastole, when there is a severe regurgitation, the blood is sucked into the aorta and also there is a reverse flow even in the femoral artery and that usually happens only in patients with severe aortic regurgitation. For all the peripheral signs, Bureaucist murmur is the most important. Peripheral signs can occur just because of the vasodilatation. You know, maybe in, it can occur in patients with anemia. It can occur in patients with aerotoxicosis. It can occur in patients with uh, atherosclerosis. All this can give rise to a peripheral vasodilatation and sometimes collapsing pulse. But when there's a durosis murmur, it obviously means there is a reversal of flow in the uh, aorta and uh, even up to the femoral artery. And that usually indicates severe aortic regurgitation. Okay, right. go ahead. Inspection and palpation together. Mm -hmm. Chest is normal in shape and bilateral symmetrical. Transverse diameter more than 80 diameter. Midline sternotomy scar is seen. The scar also seen in the epigastric region and in the left to fifth intercostal space. So, suprasternal pulsation is visible. Apex beat is felt in sixth intercostal space outside the mid clavicular line. Hyperdynamic, forceful, well sustained. Uh, so, it is not enough to say outside the mid clavicular line. Uh, are you uh, you are doing inspection palpation together? You should sorry. locate it. Why did you say outside the mid line? So, uh, one point five centimeter outside mid line. No, you should mention it because yes. uh, once you uh, on inspection you can say that outside the mid line. But if you are okay, doing palpation, yes, you yes, should sir. specifically say that. Uh -huh. uh, Hyperdynamic forceful. Uh -huh. mm. Okay. Sustained. Okay. Okay. Hyperdynamic forceful and well sustained. So. Uh, what will be the descriptive term? So, forceful sustained means. Do you like to say that it's a heaving apex beat? Yes, sir, heaving. Yes, sir. Once it is sustained, you are saying that heaving. Yes, sir, heaving, sir. Yes. Uh, when a patient is having a volume overload and along with that a heaving apex beat, uh, what is the possibility that you should think about? A failure. Huh? Sir, LV failure. LV dysfunction. LV, uh, what is the explanation? Sir, uh, sir uh, uh, LV dysfunction because of sir, um, uh, increased pre ejection time. Yeah, there is an increase in the pre ejection time, and these patients can have a sustained LV apex. And in a patient with a large heart, uh, suspecting warning overload, and if there is a heaving apex bit, you should always clinically suspect that patient may be in. Severe LV dysfunction, or it could be in heart failure also. Okay, right. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, ah, good evening. We missed you. Where were you? Uh, sir, I was outside, sir. Just now joined. Sorry, sir. I was outside. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, sir, this uh, hyperdynamic, forceful, well, well sustained, all three we cannot write. Now. Either it is hyperdynamic okay. or heaving. All three in a single line. And once we are used, once, once you are used to well sustained, I think you should go for mm. the heaving apex speed. Yes, sir. So hyperdynamic will be out of uh, question here. So hyperdynamic. Yeah, maybe, maybe because some, some, sometimes people have described hyperdynamic with uh, uh, heaving apex speed also. Especially some people have described in aortic regurgitation where there can be a warning as well as a pressure overload. And some people have even described that there can be a hyperdynamic with well sustained. But once well sustained comes, there is a heaving component definitely. And uh, uh, one problem is that whenever the patient is having a larger area of the apex speed, uh, covering a larger area of the apex speed, that gives a feeling that it could be a hyperdynamic uh, apex speed. And along with that, if it is well sustained, you can always give it a heaving apex speed. If she had said hyperdynamic forceful and well sustained, a heaving apex speed, I would have accepted it in a much better way. So I think I won't find whatever she has felt she has described, that's fine, no problems at all. So ultimately, when it is well sustained, I would add a heaving apex speed. Second heart sound not palpable. S3 is palpable. No S3 thrill palpable. No S3 click, is, no uh, rub. You must make a comment. Usually, S3 is not a palpable event. Usually. Uh, whenever your uh, sound is palpable, it is more likely to be S4 than S3. In very open. But uh, we have to verify it here. But uh, S3 is not a usual palpable event. It is uh, S4 is more frequently palpable. S1 can yes, be palpable. S2 can be palpable. S4 can be palpable. Uh, palpable. S3 is not a usual palpable event. So 
we have to be very careful when you say that s2 is palpable okay sir and okay. one more thing sir supra external pulsations are visible so uh, we have to clarify na no, second heart sound is not palpable but pulsations are visible no because maybe because of the dilated yeah, you, dilatation of the aorta it can be because he is he is hypertensive and he has got evidence of a uh, high, high volume pulse maybe aortic regurgitation and the vessel may be dilated aorta may be dilated and that may produce some uh, king and curvature of the vessels arising from the aorta and suprasternal pulsations could be there so uh, s2 need not and be patient is post op case that's why second part sounds yeah yeah okay they need not be there okay right okay go ahead sir bilateral carotid artery thrill palpable sir oh bilateral carotid artery thrill felt okay uh uh egg not uh, your comments what does this bilateral uh, carotid artery thrill uh, uh, indicate do you think that there is a uh, additional aortic stenosis or all the whole thing can be explained by aortic regurgitation or it could be a combination it could be combination sir yeah i think there is a possibility because uh, of course sir uh, aortic regurgitation itself can give rise to a non murmur including a thrill but uh, uh, bilateral carotid artery thrill palpable i would like to think more in terms that uh, of course aortic regurgitation is there then obviously an additional aortic stenosis also is a possibility so you have to carefully look for aortic evidence of aortic stenosis when you Uh, Oscar did. Um, uh, I would like to ask you one question, uh, Saroj. Yes, sir. Uh, is there a thrill in the right second in the cross space? No, sir. No, I did not get sir. No thrill. No thrill there. Mm, the new shin. No thrill there. And uh, yes, sir. Then without thrill, how bilateral carotid artery thrill will come? That has to conduct uh, from. I was. Sir, usually. Uh, Um, but then you should otherwise you have to start thinking that he must be having a lesion in the carotid artery bilateral. But that is with unusual. Okay. Then you will have to see here. That is one point. When you are when you are getting a bilateral carotid thrill, you should carefully look for a thrill in the second in the cross space, and the patient should be made to sit up, and we you should carefully palpate the second in the, in the cross space or even first in the cross space. Where on the right side, whether there is a thrill or not, as uh, uh, Gauri has rightly pointed out, bit unusual that there is no thrill in the base of the heart and there is a thrill on bilateral carotid. Bit uh, little strange there. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, there is a uh, uh, unless you think that the, the patient had got bilateral carotid uh, stenosis, but bit uh, that is bit unusual. Okay, right. Go ahead. So whenever you get this, you should specifically go and recheck whether a thrill is present in the second right in the cross space. You should be certain that you have not missed a thrill. Okay, right. Okay. Yes. Uh, sir, Parkasan, uh, there is a thrill in the right side of the heart. Excuse me, sir. Sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Then S four also we are missing, sir. I think S four should also be. If thrill is there, carotid thrill and severe AS, then S four should be there, right? No, she did not get it. She said it is the S three. No, we cannot tell that S four should be there and all, because uh, if bilateral carotid thrill we are getting means a severe AS, so S four is generally there. So they are telling that. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, this patient has got a collapsing pulse and a high volume collapsing pulse, aortic regurgitation. So a severe aortic stenosis is very unlikely. But uh, whether he has got some degree of aortic stenosis on on top of that, a high stroke volume has given rise to all these findings is something which we have to uh, uh, discuss when we discuss the clinical case. So I agree with you that because of the hypertrophy of the myocardium and all S4 is a possibility, and S4 is more uh, more likely to be palpable than S3. All those points I agree with you. Uh, but we have to first rely on the story and the physical findings. and ultimately when we come to the final diagnosis we'll think about the how to explain each physical findings okay right go ahead left subcostal region degenerative this suggests cytosolysis so is upper border of the liver dullness in the peach tinker costal space left heart border corresponds to apex right heart border vitreous tunnel left second intercostal space resonant 
and the right second intercostal space also not done sir it's a normal normal sir percussion fine percussion section sir okay right yes as one normal intensity s2 normal intensity single second heart sound you know what is the usual pattern of the s1 in a patient with aortic regurgitation uh, the surgery soft sir in a patient with aortic regurgitation what is the usual s1 is it normal decrease increased sir decreased sir decreased. why it is decreased soft soft s1 you say it is the decrease in soft s1 even some people even say that even in a patient with the Uh, severe aortic regurgitation. If you are hearing a normal uh, S1, normal intensity S1, and you are hearing an Austin Flynn murmur, and an MS, think of the possibility of mitral stenosis. Yes. Mm. So, yes, uh, no, but S3 is there, sir. S3 is there, so MS should be. No, 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 no. I am not saying this is MS. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, sir. Yeah, I am saying whenever you are getting a physical finding, you should go on thinking. Okay, right. Yes. So, yes. To all right. Go ahead. Uh, S two normal intensity, single second heart sound. S three audible. No, no, no. Don't go away. Explanation, Ashu. Uh, uh, Saroj. Yes, sir. S uh, two normal intensity and single. Yes, sir. Sir, Why? because of the aortic regurgitation. Hmm. Sir, second heart sound comes earlier. Then sir, we can get uh, single heart, single second heart sound. Second heart sound, which was what second single heart sound of this earlier? What do you mean by the second heart sound of this earlier means? Earlier to uh, closer to the P two sir. Aortic aortic wall closes early. If the aortic wall closes earlier, will the second sound be single or will become widely split? Sorry. Uh, it will be widespread. Then why are you saying that it is a uh, uh, single? No. So here, uh, are there any reasons for the A yes, two to be delayed? Uh, uh, or in failure, in failure, it can be delayed. In failure, yes. it can be delayed. The patient, uh, uh, patient uh, by history, there is evidence that patient has got developed. Uh, Uh, heart failure and also the cardiac enlargement we hearing apex beat may indicate lv dysfunction and in that case uh, 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 a2 can be delayed and uh, the second sound can be single okay. sir, in valve replacement uh, can be sir uh, like if, because sir he he was given anti uh, uh, three months of uh, blood thinner only sir so possibly it was a tissue valve so sir in the uh, 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 bioprosthetic valve. What will be the sir, second heart sound? Oh, that can be here normally. The, the second heart sound in bioprosthetic valve is normal. I am asking a question here. What are the uh, situations here which can cause a delay of S two, a delay of A two? Yes, sir. One is failure. One is cellular dysfunction. Very good. Yes, yes two. Yes, sir. Yes. Postoperative. Yes, sir. Yeah, postoperative. He has he has developed what? Sir, post operative we may not be able to hear the uh, second heart sound. No, 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 that's not correct. Yeah. Yes, due to mismatch, sir. Due to mismatch, mismatch, you can. Not mismatch. In a patient with this, he has got a uh, um, pulse pressure is his diastolic pressure is forty two, and he has got a very high pulse pressure, aortic regurgitation, and then what happens to uh, A two in aortic regurgitation, severe aortic regurgitation? What is the, in a normal in a severe aortic regurgitation? What happens to it? Is it early or late? It occurs early, sir. It occurs early. What is the explanation? In a patient with aortic regurgitation, why A2 occurs early? Explanation. Gavro, what is your opinion? Due to rapid runoff, uh, that is the cause. Sir. Rapid peripheral runoff. Saroj, what happens to in a patient with aortic regurgitation? Uh, what will happen to hang out in level of uh, aortic valve in aortic regurgitation? It will come down, sir. Why it comes down? 
Or is it is it there? Uh, yeah. out in revel is prolonged. Prolonged, sir. More volume is prolonged. Eh? More volume will be there after regurgitation. Not because of the volume. The, the, uh, that, of course, you can mention that there is a higher stroke volume. But so peripheral no, resistance is less. Your peri when the peripheral resistance is less, what will happen to hang out in rubble? It will increase. 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 Increases. So, uh, actually, A2 is delayed in aortic regurgitation. So, the main mechanism why A2 is delayed is because of the prolonged hangout interval in a patient with aortic regurgitation because of the low peripheral resistance. And uh, these patients can have single, single uh, second heart sound, even uh, fully paradoxically split second heart sound. Okay. Now, what can be another explanation for uh, single second heart sound? Maybe because any complication during surgery, like uh, uh, patient might have developed a left hand block. Conduction abnormality. The patient might have developed a left bundle branch block, and that can be another explanation. So, A2 can, the S2 can be single, one, because the patient is in heart failure, so they delayed. Two, um, but looking at the pressure, uh, the patient may not be in significant heart failure because of the high pulse pressure. When the patient is in heart failure, usually the pulse pressure comes down even in presence of aortic regurgitation. But so here, there are many reasons for us to explain the single second heart sound one. Maybe some degree of LV dysfunction to the, the hangout interval or the aortic, aortic value is uh, uh, more, giving rise to a delayed A2, which also superimposes on P2. And maybe whether patient has some conduction abnormality like bundle branch block, which has resulted in a delayed A2. Okay, so we have got plenty of explanation. Okay, right. Yes, S3 is on. Um. Uh, sir, S3. Sir, uh, uh, sir. Yes, yes. One second, sir. One second, sir. Sir, actually, uh, this expression for the severe AR or uh, uh, all uh, any type of AR, delayed A2 in case of any, AR. Any, any patient with a uh, with a peripheral uh, vasodilatation, A2 will be delayed because of the longer hangout interval. Okay. Sir. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. S4 not audible. Sir, uh, opening because the patient had a valve replacement. Sir, I could not hear any. Opening sound or closing click or sir, closing sound. Oh, so that obviously means it is a bioprosthetic valve. See, yes, uh, how will you differentiate uh, uh, the, the uh, star rigid valve, uh, tilting disc valve, and the bioprosthetic valve by auscultating? Saroj? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, in case of star, star adverb valve, sir, mm -hmm. uh, we will be able to hear the opening uh, sound. Oh. But closing sound will not be heard. No, Ball no, no. valve. Ball closing valve. Also will be heard. No, no, no. In, by, in, in, uh, in, uh, which one are you describing? Is it caged ball well? And caged ball. Caged ball well. Both opening noise and the uh, closing noise will be heard. Very often, opening noise will be louder than the closing noise. Both will be metallic and opening noise will be louder than the metallic. closing sound, it is said that uh, the, uh, the start is uh, endothelialized, so we may not, may not be... I agree with you. I agree with oh. you. The sound will not be as loud as the opening noise. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. The opening noise will be louder and the, uh, the closing noise also will be heard, but it will be definitely much less compared to the opening noise. Normally also when the well closes, you hear a sound. But yes, normally when the well opens, you don't hear a sound. In a, in a, in a, uh, in a uh, caged ball well, you can hear a loud opening noise. Sometimes even you can hear, especially in the mitral position, you may be able to hear multiple, multiple sounds. Multiple sounds. Okay, right. When is the tilting disc well? Uh, sir, uh, closing sound will be heard. Opening will not be heard. Very good. Oh, the cl closing sound will be heard, which can be also ma sometimes metallic, and the opening noise will not be audible. Of course, it may be dull metallic because, as you rightly said, because the endothelialization, the sound may not be sharply uh, uh, metallic. Okay. In a bioprosthetic well? In a bioprosthetic well, sir, we will hear normal heart sound, okay. but sometimes sir, opening sound may be heard if it is in mitral position. Oh, if the patient has started developing stenosis, otherwise in a normally opening well, uh, you may not be able to hear an opening noise. It may behave like a perfectly normal well, but if the patient has started developing some degree of uh, stenosis, as you rightly said, you, it may be possible that you may be hearing a opening noise. Okay, so if the, from the from the uh, description of the sounds, 
most likely this is a bio procedure okay right go ahead break 3 by 6 early diastolic high pitch blowing murmur heard in the left third intercostal space close to the sternal border best heard patient sitting up and leaning forward with diaphragm of the stethoscope breath held in expiration and the okay, same good, murmur good, good, good description excellent the so same murmur is also heard all over the picodium but with a lesser intensity okay so i do uh, You, you are hearing one murmur which is heard all over the precordium, but it is best heard in the third left in the cross space. Classical description of an aortic regurgitation murmur. Okay, right. Very, very good. Go ahead. Ah, yeah. Ah, Agnath, what are the causes of early diastolic murmur? Uh, sir, uh, aortic regurgitation. Yes. Ah, uh, then pulmonary regurgitation. Regurgitation. Yes. Ah. Uh, What is the third cause for uh, uh, early diastolic murmur? Uh, trunk arteriosus, uh, uh, trunkal regurgitation, yes. and uh, uh, there is something known as a dog's murmur, where people have described that from the stenosis, stenosis of the lady. Sometimes you may be able to hear an early diastolic murmur, but for first three you should definitely mention. Okay, go ahead. Another murmur also heard, grade two by six, after the mid-systolic early peaking. Best audible in the uh, aortic area. Breath held in expiration and conducted to both the carotids. Oh, okay. But uh, in the carotid, is uh, associated with the thrill. So actually, turbulence is uh, maybe because of the uh, postoperative case. There must have been some some anatomical abnormality of that region, and that may be one of the reasons why we are not able to get the thrill in the in the uh, uh, in the expected aortic position. But here it is only grade two by six. Yes, and you are hearing you are feeling a thrill in the in the carotid but that be unusual so you have to give an explanation why the murmur has become louder as it went to the carotid it is not the sir, murmur what you told sir by natural carotid artery stenosis only or sir maybe because of uh, uh, flow but flow uh, flow is initially it is through the aortic yeah. valve so that yes. should give rise to a loud murmur in aortic valve And then it can be conducted to the, conducted to the carotids, but bilateral carotid artery stenosis be done usually. If it was yes, loud on one side, we could have thought that we have to rule out a carotid artery stenosis. But then anyway, we will keep our mind. Sir, I will better uh, make it a grade four by six, sir. It will be much better. This AS murmur. No, no, because you already we are getting a thrill in the carotid, then making it a grade two by six. Uh, So, the release in the carotid, you cannot uh, make it four by six in the aortic position. Out yeah. that also. Now we are uh, think whether there is an additional cause, uh, any kinking or what I don't know, or something which has caused the murmur, uh, generation of a uh, of a of a turbulence which has resulted in a louder noise in the aortic area, uh, in the carotid, in the neck. Okay, right? Yes. No other murmur heard. No Austin Finn murmur heard, okay. and no mechanical sound heard. Okay. So now you discuss the case, uh, Saroj. Your possibilities and. Sir, seventy-four. What are the things are very clear? And then you can uh, describe yes, the events which may have resulted in this. Yes, sir. Very clear. 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 Yes, sir. Very clear.
But he is physician and cardiology, the, the cardiologist and the surgeon, for whom he has been regularly visiting, has not told him about the, the murmur. In a, when a biopositive way, will they degenerate? Is it more stenosis or rehabilitation? Mm. Sir, I don't know. Sir, degeneration will be more. Oh, so by stenosis. explanation, it is more regurgitation only. By explanation, if you see, it is volume overload. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, not say, I'm not saying in this patient. In a patient with bioprosthetic wear, do you find more stenosis or regurgitation? Sir, more stenosis. They are more, more stenosis because they degenerate and then they get calcified. And they develop stenosis. Regurgitation yes. can take place, but uh, uh, such severe regurgitation is not a usual feature of. It means uh, some something must have precipitated his regurgitation. You have to keep his mind open because he might be, he might not have developed any significant fever, uh, but uh, yes, we have to think of the possibility whether an infective endocarditis has to be excluded. Because he, for a short period, he has developed significant aortic regurgitation. His treating doctors have never told him about any any regurgitation at all, and he has come with severe regurgitation, significant cardiac enlargement, evidence of trying aortic regurgitation. So I would keep my mind open and like to rule out. It may not be there, but I would like to rule out infective endocarditis also. Yes. Okay, like this. And also, such severe aortic regurgitation is not the common thing. Of course, it can happen, but common thing in a degenerating uh, bioprosthetic well, where degener degenerating uh, bioprosthetic well comes with calcification and stenosis. Yes. Okay, right. Yes. So I rule out other syphilis and other causes also, sir. Well, there is no history of exposure to venereal disease. She has said that. Oh. Okay, right. Yes. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, put the diagnosis, uh, then we'll go to the investigations. Yes, sir. So, chronic degenerative aortic valve disease, possibly, yeah. uh, so, sorry, sorry, sir, I should not have write possibly. Severe aortic regurgitation, status post bioprosthetic aortic valve replacement with structural degenerative failure, Very with good. congestive heart failure, Very now good. in NEHA class 2. Without any evidence of infective endocarditis or embolic episode or signs of pulmonary artery hypertension, patient in sinus rhythm, no, no evidence of embolic episode. Sir. Uh, only, only thing is that since because of a subacute, something like a subacute aortic regurgitation, whether we would, would you like to look for and rule out a possibility of a uh, infective endocarditis? I agree with you that there are no clinical signs, no fever, nothing. So, uh, chances are low, but uh, you have to keep your mind open and you should not miss a diagnosis. Okay, right. So, any other differential diagnosis? Sir, uh, yeah, that um, ischemic heart disease associated with yeah, the thing, but uh, the story and the physical findings, I think yes. uh, this is the correct way of thinking because there is nothing for, for us to suspect that he had a ischemia because no history of. Uh, just pay nothing. Only thing is he has undergone a CABG procedure when he underwent the valve replacement. Okay. So I think uh, the, uh, this, uh, this is the correct way of thinking. Uh, we cannot uh, bring in too many differential diagnoses because the, the sequence of events, everything goes to uh, tell us that he had a valve replacement, the myoprosthetic valve, it has developed degeneration, and has gone in for significant aortic regurgitation. Okay. Now let's look, look at the investigations. Uh, what investigation would you look at first, uh, Gaurav? ECG X-ray? Uh, ECG, sir. What do you expect in the electrocardiogram? Uh, volume overload and pressure overload both because uh, heaving apex has been told. So. Oh, okay, right. Um, more of more like okay. uh, uh, pressure over like, over like, overload like pattern. Mm. I think that there could be some element of volume overload also. Okay, right. And then what else? Then any post op any LBB is there or not? But uh, yes, very good. Yes. But and sinus rhythm, so sinus rhythm is there, so AF is ruled out. Okay. What about? How do you know that? She has said it is sinus regular. rhythm. Oh. Sinus rhythm, she has written. Okay. A, a waves also seen. JB, JBP A waves are seen. So mostly yes. AF uh, and is also, ruled out. And also, I think regurgitation is a lesion which usually does not give rise to atrial fibrillation. So it's unlike mitral, mitral. Uh -huh, yes, sir. LA enlargement, I will 
chronic ARL enlargement. Uh, this is your PNP and also yes, deteriorated. So I think you keep in mind and carefully look for left atrial enlargement. Yes. Let's look at the ECG, uh, Saroj. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Saraj, you will report the ECG? Yes, sir. Sir, from the ECG, uh, patient in sinus rhythm. Sir, sir, the, oh. pro, uh, sir left at sign, sir, sign of left atrial prominence in B1. Sir, prominent negative uh, wave in uh, P in B1. No, what the PR what interval is, is normal. What is the criteria? PR interval, is it normal or is it the upper limit of normal? Let me see one. This actually, it's 0.2. Point point yes, sir. Little higher, sir. Yes, sir. Point yes, sir. Just borderline. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, 0.20. Yes, sir. 0.2, almost 5. Uh, why is there a left side enlargement? Do you think sir, so? Uh, no, sir. Just just negative periods. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, not, yeah. not fulfilling the criteria. Yeah, yeah. But sir, in lead two, sir, the second notch little prominent. Not much, ma'am. No, not much. Not much. Not enough. Only diagonal left side in lead. Axis is also left forward. Yes, sir. Axis is sir left forward axis, sir. Around it is coming to third peak. No, no. It is less than thirty because lead two is more positive. Lead two is more positive. Uh, yes, sir. The transition is between lead two and AVF. So obviously it will be around uh, a little more. Minus than 10. Than minus 10, minus 20. Minus minus 10, something like minus 15. Uh, sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. Minus 15. Okay, like yes. Sir. And yeah. sir, very deep S wave in B3. Yeah. Sir, so, uh, sir, criteria for LVH is fulfilled, sir. Uh, V3, uh, there is no description of the. Sir, uh, uh, it is only for V1 and V2. Uh, sir, uh, together two leads, sir. AVL and V3, sir. I forget, sir. One criteria with V3 and uh, D pass in V3. Coronal and... voltage criteria, sir. Uh, voltage criteria. Coronal voltage uh, uh. R in AVL and S in V3 more than 20 mm in. Yeah, and it is. More than 28 mm in V3. But here, see, what, what, what would you, what, what is the correct thing for you to do in this patient? Sir, so one you... more lead posterior, one more posterior lead to be taken, sir, because uh, LV, uh, LV, uh, LV hypertrophy. Sir, one down, down, sir, one space down. We should yes, take. you have to sway, take one, one space down because apex width is in the. Sir, uh, sixth and. Uh, sixth and because space. One. So it is not going through the apex. So you have to take uh, uh, one uh, chest leads, one space down, and that would definitely pick up the uh, LV forces. Uh, prominent uh, R in V6. Definitely pick up good LV forces. So you should have done immediately a uh, repeat electrocardiogram with chest leads, one space down. That would have, I am quite, quite sure, that would have definitely picked up a uh, high volume. Uh, so, uh, uh, evidence of left ventricular hypertrophy pattern by, by voltage criteria. Quite sure about it. Okay, right. Okay, right. Yes. Anyway, sir, volume order features I am not able to see because uh, T is uh, is not volume overload ECG, sir. Yeah, I agree with you that there is not a. But you, once you take the one space down, then only we can be certain if the QRS is narrow and also very high or very, very tall QRS. That may suggest to us that probably there is an element of volume overload also. So we have to look at the uh, one space now for us to be certain. X-ray. Okay, right. Yes, very good. X-ray. Anybody who would like to interpret, uh, Gaurav, would you like to interpret the X-ray? Yes, the X-ray chest. Yes. Yes, you go ahead, uh, Gaurav. Yes, extra chest uh, supine portable, sir. So uh, I will not comment on cardiomegaly then. Mm -hmm. It's not a good extra to comment about cardiomegaly. I agree with you. But uh, uh, what are the uh, what are the conclusions that you can draw? Do you think that there is a, some prominence of the upper row veins? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah. yes. There is some prominence of the upper lobe veins. He has got evidence of a previously healed tuberculous lesion. 
So left interlobular fissure is prominent. No, but left side, how you will get interlobular fissure? Right? So right what is side. that? Sir? I, I, uh, I fibrotic stand, post TB can be. Ah, yes, it has to be fibrotic stand. Yeah, it is a fibrotic That's stand, and most likely it is a healed tuberculosis. Yes, mm. Okay, I think there is some evidence. The iota is dilated. Iota is dilated. One thing we can say that mm. iota is dilated. You see, because the, I agree with you that, but then, yeah, as you rightly said, it is a supine portable X ray. I think you have to be careful in commenting about the cardiac size, iota, and all those things. So, uh, I would keep my mind open and uh, I agree with you that there is some suggestion that iota is slightly dilated, which can be explained by the severe iotic regurgitation lesion. Okay, right. Yes. And it is LV type apex, sir. Apex is coming down. Mm -hmm. So, LV type apex, we can. Mm -hmm. I agree that uh, uh, there is some degree of uh, some suggestion that it could be more like an LV apex, but uh, if it was a uh, PA view in a standing position, you could have been uh, almost 100 percent certain. But I agree with you that this could be an okay. and no evidence of RA or LA enlargement. So yeah. it is no LA evidence LA of RA or LA. Uh, there is a, no evidence. Uh, LA enlargement is not there because uh, in a patient with a portable, uh, portable su supine portable X ray, the LA enlargement will be definitely picked up. But here it is not picked up, so I agree with you that LA is not enlarged. So R is also not in last. R is also not in. Uh, both, yeah, I agree with you. Okay, now coming to the echocardiogram. Sir, echo is there. Sir, so echo in another side. So just one minute. Okay, right, yes. Mm -hmm. I think we can say he is in NYHA class 3, sir. Seeing this x ray, NYHA class 2 is. Uh, Sir, can you see my video? No. No, ma'am. Huh? No. I think you have to uh, escape from this and uh, uh, go, go, yes, go you have to screen sharing and yeah. then click the other one. Oh. You have to stop this. Stop sharing this, ma'am. Stop, stop sharing. sharing? Okay. Uh, stop sharing, then open the other one. Open the other window, yes. Open the other one, then you share it. Now you escape from this, then you go to the you go, go to that uh, the the echo clips, open it, then you. Uh, so one minute, sir. I am unable to do it. Mm. You can, another thing that you can do is that you completely escape from the uh, from this. Totally, then you open your uh, echo file, you uh, minimize it, and then you open this uh, uh, Zoom file, yes, then yes. do the uh, screen sharing. Yes, and then uh, share screen, now, yes, now I can do it. Yes. Okay, fine, great. Uh, somebody else should uh, interpret it, not the, not the, uh, yes. Any, uh, uh, Egnath, would you like to give a comment? Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, it's a short axis. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it is one, one is short axis and is long axis. Short axis is a papillary muscle level, sir. It's not very well taken. Okay, sir. Yeah, that's all if right. I see, sir, we can see the uh, aortic regurgitation, sir. Yeah, yeah that's right. What is the Pressure of time of aortic regurgitation? More than. Sir, it was 200 around. Oh, 200. Okay. Sir, one minute, once more, I will please. But, sir, LV appears to be normal, sir. Whatever clip I have seen, LV appears to be normal. LV function. Sir, 297 seconds. Oh, 242 is... milliseconds. Sir, once more, I am playing, sir. So, uh, so it is. Uh, uh, severe usually it is uh, 200 or less, so 290 means uh, moderate to severe. Okay, right, yes. 
there is some degree of LV dysfunction, may not be very severe. Oh, that's a severe aortic regurgitation. Hmm. I agree with you that LV does not look that bad. Yeah. And sir, aortic valve gradient is 41. 41. Only. Okay. Yeah. okay, so moderate stenosis also. No, sir. Uh, because of okay. the flow, it may be. No? Yeah, 40 can be explained by the flow itself. There may be some degree of stenosis also. It may be a combination. Because aortic regurgitation by pressure of time is not severe. So, if so you 242 want... milliseconds, sir. Eh? 242 milliseconds, sir. Ah, 242. Moderate. Uh, 200 or less is severe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, here it is uh, by a hill sign also, it is moderate. So, all put together, moderate to severe. May not be exactly severe, but uh, high moderate. Uh, and uh, that cannot explain the gradient of 40. So, I would go for a, some degree of aortic stenosis on top of aortic regurgitation. Yes. But uh, we have to look at the aortic valve very well. Because uh, we would like to look at the uh, aortic valve. Oh, I have seen a parastinal view, ma'am. Parastinal view, dekhna tha. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Nahi le paaye the chik se. And what is the uh, aortic valve orifice size? Yeah. Sir, because of the, uh, sir, uh, after valve replacement, um, sir, the 2D I could not take. I should have taken BTI method. Oh, yes. Uh, but, sir, I did not take. You should have taken a continuity equation. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Velocity time integral of the okay. LVOT and the aortic valve. Yes, yes, that would have given you an idea about the yes, sir. aortic orifice. Uh, uh, I did not take. Course, when the aortic valve is replaced, they are inherently mildly stenotic, but on top of that, patient might have developed some degree of uh, uh, calcification, regeneration, some degree of aortic stenosis. And also, you have to look at what is the cause of aortic regurgitation. Is it all uh, degeneration of the valve cusp, or is it uh, there is some uh, para, this, uh, paravalvular leak, or anything like that has happened or not? And you have to delineate the valve cusp very well to rule out any. Uh, infective and necrotis process also may not be very high probability, but still it has to be yes, ruled sir. out because over a short period of time he has developed severe aortic regurgitation while he was uh, consulting his uh, cardiologist as well as the surgeon, and none of them told him that he has got a significant aortic regurgitation. Okay, now uh, echo interpretation. Saroj, you interpret the echo and then we can go for the. Uh, any any other hemodynamic study done in this patient? No, sir, uh, not done, sir. We were planning that uh, the patient uh, need out a uh, re replacement of the. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. No, no, not yet done. Uh, planning for. Uh, uh, sir, both T as well as uh, angiogram, and then sir, plan for. Uh, sir, you, have to do, you have to do a cardiac CT also because you have to look at the uh, the valve ring, all those things. So cardiac CT would be most uh, okay, sir. Nice of the valve, the valve, the prosthetic valve. Everything can be well delineated by doing a cardiac CT. That is required. Of course, sir, I agree with you that Francis uh, Bajelka will give most of the information, but. Uh, so now coming to the full diagnosis and the management. Saroj? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Diagnosis? Sir, uh, as the patient uh, uh, admitted with uh, acute uh, LVF, sir, so stabilization by medical management. Okay. Uh, no, you don't go to the manager first, the, tell the diagnosis. Diagnosis? Sir, sir. Yes, sir. The patient was uh, on a, a previous aortic valve replacement by a positive valve. CABG now presenting with now presenting with uh, acute LVF and uh, uh, subacute uh, uh, valve degeneration possibly sub subacute valve degeneration uh, causing severe aortic regurgitation 
and most likely some degree of aortic stenosis also i think yes sir mild aortic stenosis sir yes yes sir so severe aortic uh, more moderate to severe aortic regurgitation and uh, may be associated with a mild degree of uh, uh, aortic stenosis most likely related to degeneration of the bioprosthetic valve the reasons for that bilateral carotid thrill that also you know Uh, okay, you have to do a carotid Doppler to rule out the possibility of aortic stenosis. Uh, sorry, carotid stenosis because in, in the aortic area you are getting only a two by six murmur, and then you are getting a bilateral carotid thrill. Uh, that obviously means that there should be an area where the turbulence is becoming more. I think Gaurav is correct that uh, uh, you cannot uh, uh, move away from the possibility that uh, something is odd there. Either you have underestimated the Uh, the murmur in the aortic area, or there is a possibility that there may be some stenosis of the both the carotids, which has resulted in a turbulence in the carotid artery. Yes. So you have to get a Doppler also done, Doppler of the carotid to make it certain that uh, there is nothing wrong with the carotids. Okay. Yes. Now coming to the management uh, investigations, further investigations, mostly you have to do a CT also, cardiac CT. That will give you about the much greater idea about the uh, the valve and what can be done. And coming to the management. Sir, management. Sir, Would you like to stabilization of the patient? Would you like to do a coronary angiogram also? Yes, sir. No, I think we have to do yes, coronary angiogram also. Look at the uh, the native coronary arteries as well as the graft also. Okay, right. Yes. Has he received what type of graft? Has he received? Is it a IMA graft or radial graft or is it a venous graft? ियर <laughs> You have to look at the aortic valve, aorta and the aortic valve. That's the most area, important area that you should look at. Yes. yes. Okay. Then management. Sir, management. Management. Sir, if coronary angiogram is and the graft vessels are okay, then sir, we will go for uh, aortic valve replacement again, sir. Now, sir. Uh, Uh, valve in valve, sir. I think we can go for TAVI now. Yeah, I think you can, you can uh, think of a TAVI valve in valve. Uh, I think he may be an ideal candidate for that. We provided he can afford it. I think he can undergo a valve in valve aortic valve replacement uh, TAVI. I think that's the correct thing to do. It's less traumatic, especially. Or uh, sir, if it is in moderate area, sir, then can we stabilize him, see him for six months or? Because uh, now last week all the IVC is also collapsed only, and LV function is also okay. So I think it's improving much. Yeah, yes, improved, but uh, he may further deteriorate also because he, he has got the ACE class still symptomatic. So if the procedure mm -hmm. is done without much problem, yes. But uh, I agree with you that he can be put on in a very aggressive medical management with the use of. Plenty of uh, also dialysis, very powerful. So all all five pillars of the failure. Hmm. So uh, optimum medical management, uh, we can evaluate uh, the improvement and then decide whether he should undergo a, 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 a possible uh, TAVI, which will actually give him lot of relief. I think that's a good suggestion that uh, uh, TAVI, TAVI, or whatever it is, is a uh, is a possibility in him. But also, I agree that you can give him intensive medical management. See how much he improves. If he can come back to a near normal life without much problem, yes, can be continued. But if he has got a uh, still symptomatic, I would definitely recommend that he can undergo a, 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 a TAVI, so that he, his aortic regurgitation is the one which is creating problem, and he should be very much better with that. And aortic stenosis also will be tackled with the uh, TAVI procedure. Ma'am, what is the LVDD and LV that? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was a high. It was 59 LV. Uh, LV IV. Ah, then yes. you have to go. Yes. 59. And ejection fraction near nearing it is 48 percent. Eh? 
rejects file would be 48 to 50 sir so that obviously in the setting yes, of yeah. rejection 48 may visit by uh, what is it the uh, simpson method sir or, or uh, by plane and no sir uh, not tech method Uh, it was sir simpson method i did it uh, governor when simpson's method and in simpson's method what is the normal value what is the abnormal value for uh, sir for surgery that i think is less than 55 we have to go for surgery sir if less no, than no, 55 no, no, no. in general in uh, by plane ejection fraction what is the normal value sir 50 it is More than fifty-five. More than fifty-five. No, fifty-one. Fifty-one and above is normal. Fifty-two, yes, sir. Fifty-one. Forty, forty-one to fifty is considered as mild LV dysfunction. Thirty-one to forty is considered as moderate, and thirty and below is considered as severe aortic severe LV dysfunction. Uh, in the presence of aortic regurgitation, obviously the value should be definitely higher. So forty-nine obviously means that patient has got a friendly mild or even maybe low moderate aortic uh, LV dysfunction. So. Uh, that may be all partly related to his volume overload, and uh, he may benefit by actually uh, aortic regurgitation. You have to be very careful because aortic regurgitation sometimes uh, when they start developing LV dysfunction, their improvement even after viral replacement may not be that striking. So uh, uh, 5.9, uh, that size of the LV diameter is it? Yes, sir. LV IDS, sir. Yes. That obviously no problem. It can be uh, the patient can undergo viral replacement. I think I agree with you that the aggressive medical management, if the LV size comes down and the improve significantly, continue with that. But if the improvement is not satisfactory, I think he is a candidate for TAVR. Sir, so now management of valve replacement says that any symptomatic patient of aortic regurgitation has to go for AVR uh, after the uh, precipitating factor excluded. Yeah. Yeah, we what factor, what what factor excluded? Sir, precipitating factor if present. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Yes. Uh, I think here uh, one strange thing is that he has developed aortic regurgitation over a short period. Something, uh, uh, I don't know whether something more is uh, one something more is required to explain every. Sir, can this be like sir aortic regurgitation patient remain asymptomatic for a long time? Oh, that's right. That's fine. I agree with you. That's possible. But the, 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 he was being examined by two doctors. They had never told him that he has got a leak, and uh, uh, then he suddenly developed a symptom. That is a bit strange. And also, sometimes people, when the patients start developing aortic regurgitation, which progressively increases, uh, the treating doctor can uh, definitely increase uh, vasodilators, which has been shown to some to, in some studies that it may decrease the progression of the aortic regurgitation. So that is a bit odd here. That is the only thing. I agree with you that aortic regurgitation can remain asymptomatic. The patient can have normal physical. Uh, uh, they can exercise normally, and then when they start deteriorating, they deteriorate rapidly. I agree with you that. But uh, if the deterioration is so rapid, it was never told of a murmur, never told of a heart lesion. So all put together, that is why I thought uh, we we definitely should uh, review. And look for any vegetations in the aortic valve. Make it certain that you are not missing an aortic uh, yes. uh, infective and neglected scopes. Still, I agree with you that there is there is no strong evidence because uh, peripheral signs also not there. No, no fever, nothing. So, I agree that uh, there is nothing. But sometimes strange things can happen. You have to keep your mind open and try to see that you are missing not missing something. Okay. Any other comments? Very good, sir. Uh, good case, good discussion. I think a lot of people involved. I think everybody, more and more people, should get involved in the discussion part. Then only it becomes very lively and more and a very good learning process. Very good, sir. Anybody, any anybody would like to give any any comments, any any doubts? There are some questions to ask. They are due to increase in aortic hangout in the well. Well, close slide due to fall in PVR. Very good. AR, PR, TR, Sangal, upright. Okay, very good. I think uh, that's it. If there are no more questions or no more uh, points to discuss, we'll stop at this level. And uh, next week, what should we have?
next week will be what what uh, today is 15 22nd uh, i have to i am i have been asked to discuss a, a, a discussion on uh, heart failure clinic they are having a uh, case discussion i have been asked to be one of the examiners so Sir, next next Saturday sir, Saturday or Sunday sir? It is on a Friday. It coincides with our discussion. So let me find oh. out. Uh, okay, oh, sir. Oh, let me find out whether this on Friday or Saturday. If it is not Friday, sir, I will Friday. Uh, oh, generally they take on Saturday, sir. Usually it is Saturday. Saturday, but yes, this time they made it Friday. Okay, okay. So, so if it is, uh, so I will let you. I let you know. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. I I think good case, good discussion. Congratulations, uh, Saroj, for bringing a case. Uh, Gaurav, why can't you bring a case? Uh, I will. Thanks, sir. I will. Okay. Okay. Or Agnath can bring one. Agnath, you also discuss the case very well. Full. I think one streamline your thinking process. I think discussion can improve, and you will become very confident also. Uh, okay. Somebody, Saroj, she has become so confident, and I think you are going to run extremely well. When are you appearing, Saroj? <laughs> This year, uh, after three months. Sir. Oh, I am quite sure you will have a you will definitely have a walk through. I think your your confidence level, your thought process, everything has improved quite a lot. Very, very good. Thanks. Okay, we we'll stop at this level. Next week, Gaurav uh, uh, will bring a case and. Uh, If the if there is a uh, heart failure uh, society's discussion, we will have it week after next. And I also will prepare one so that in case uh, uh, he is not able to bring one, I will definitely bring one case. Okay. Okay. Right. Good night. Very good. Excellent. Okay. okay thank you. Bye. Uh, they are not very good. I think you should uh, involve in the discussion more and more. Okay. Good. Thank you, sir. Okay. So from here, I'm ending the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Imansu, Imansu. Yes, sir. Okay, we are uh, discontinuing. Okay, fine, great. Okay, okay, sir. Fine, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.